This is the Hammerhead Karoo. If you're after a bike computer for navigation and routing, routing if you're American, then this unit aims to be the best tool for the job. There's a lot of tech and hardware crammed into this Android-based computer though, meaning it has the potential to offer far more than just navigation. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at all the features and exactly the things it can do. Now, if you like our content and would like to support the channel, then please click subscribe down below and also the bell icon so that you get notifications. Right, let's have a look. Firstly, I'm going to show you the unit and focus mainly on the hardware. And then I'm going to talk about the software, so the mapping, the routing, and the real-time data side of things. Now, out of the box, the first thing that you notice is that massive screen. And also, the unit feels pretty weighty and substantial in your hand. And that's because there's just so much tech crammed inside it. And it also has a really robust construction. So inside here is a titanium alloy skeleton to make it really strong. And also a Gorilla Glass screen, which is either made by or from Gorillas. I can't remember, but either way, it's really tough stuff. While on the subject of the screen, this is no ordinary bike computer screen. The Karoo is more like a smartphone in this regard. The screen is said to be the highest definition and most responsive on the market for bike computers. And it's 480 by 640 with 229 pixels per inch. Um, the responsiveness is really impressive and you can multi-touch and pinch zoom in or out on the maps and stuff. It's like a smartphone screen. As well as the high resolution screen, there's also anti-glare built in, a feature you will never, ever, ever need in the UK, but you will in other places. There's also false touch detection on the screen as well, which is designed to help stop rain droplets from interfering with the touch screen, something that you will definitely need in the UK. Although to be fair, it's quite sunny, it's weird. Global warming. There's also the option to lock the touch screen by pressing these two buttons here. And the buttons on the side have some really ergonomic, cool features. So the functions of those buttons double up with the main functions of the screen, meaning you don't have to use the screen if you don't want to. This is useful if you say wearing gloves, where a touch screen can be a bit difficult to use. Also, the buttons are offset, which is a clever idea because it means when you pinch the unit to press the buttons on one side, you don't accidentally press the buttons on the other side as well. There's Wi-Fi AMP Plus and Bluetooth connectivity built into the unit, and the claimed battery life is 15 hours. But there is a handily placed USB port here that's uh, useful for charging it on the fly if you want to with an external battery pack. Something that we increasingly see people do when they're bike packing or doing extreme endurance events. Something else that's different from many other bike computers, and again, perhaps more similar to smartphones, is that the Karoo is built on an Android platform. And Hammerhead tells us that there's loads of hardware built into the device that it's yet to take advantage of, meaning that what this unit offers is likely to evolve over time in a way that we've never seen with a bike computer before. Now, an example of this is there is a SIM card slot built into the device down here. Now, you don't need to use a SIM card to make it work, and this feature can remain dormant. But down the line, Hammerhead reckons that it could add a whole host of exciting functionality, such as live tracking and things like that. And also, the open source nature of Android means that you can actually design and build your own apps and put things on the device. Now, apparently, some people in the Hammerhead community have done just that. Right, let's talk about routing and navigation. The Karoo is aiming to vastly improve this navigation experience, and there are a number of routing options. But firstly, it's important to point out that maps are included with the device. They're not all stored on the device, though. They're stored up in the cloud. Uh, I can't actually see the cloud today. So it's a good job that I downloaded the UK maps earlier when I could see the cloud. 
you download the maps for the region that you're going to be riding in and delete them and re-upload them as appropriate whenever you need them and it's a similar system to what wahoo does it's important to point out because some other brands they charge extra for the maps on top of the price of the unit and this could be quite significant you can create routes on the fly on the device and you can actually edit the routes on the device as well so powerful is the the processor and the screen combined so if you want to go via a particular waypoint or road you can do now for example i'm currently in the middle of nowhere now if i put in a uh, home and ask it to take me there it calculates a route that's well pretty sensible actually that is the roads that i would take having knowledge of the area myself so yeah pretty cool You can also put routes on the device using Hammerhead's own dashboard. It's really easy, right? So you can just take a link from your chosen mapping site, whether that's Komoot, Strava, or Google Maps or others, and you copy and paste it into this bar, and then it will appear on the device. So easy. There's also the option to create routes within Hammerhead's own dashboard too. You just go into the route builder, and then you go create new route, and away you go. I've just created one to Cheddar Gorge. Nice. Customizing your data screens can be done on the device too. Uh, it's really easy and a neat feature allows you to prioritize certain sensors over others. So for example, if you had a speed sensor and you wanted to make sure that your speed reading was coming from the speed sensor and not from GPS, which is less accurate, you can do or for example if you had more than one power meter and you wanted to make sure that it was preferentially reading one and not the other again you can do all of your settings and custom screens and sensors and preferences they're stored up in the cloud which means that if you were to lose your unit or if it were to get broken or stolen or whatever then if you get a replacement unit you can instantly put all of your settings onto that unit. It also means if you were to ever borrow a unit, you can put the settings on there instantly as well. Or you could share a unit with multiple people and you could all have your own individual profiles. And when you've finished your ride, when you go to upload it to your chosen third party site, whether that's Strava, Komoot or whatever, then you actually get the option to name the ride and set the privacy settings on the device before it just automatically uploads. I like that and it's not a feature that I've encountered on any other bike computer before. Nice. Now I hope you found this video informative um, and I hope you can see that it's a really interesting device and if you have then please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and let us know what you think about the Karoo in the comments section down below.